When I draw, generally I already know what I want to communicate and it's almost like the lines are already on the page and I'm just dusting away the sand on the image and revealing what's going to emerge from underneath. My earliest memory of drawing was probably in prep school and I remember the teacher proudly showing off my sketchbook in which I'd drawn A is for astronaut while most of the other kids in the class had drawn A is for apple, A is for ant. And from that very young age I actually knew that I had a gift. The blonde boys in the family drew, so that's my eldest brother uh, and my youngest brother and me being the middle child for some strange reason. My eldest brother and I, when I was about five years of age, I do recall us having impromptu drawing competitions and my dad would pull out the Herald Sun newspaper and turn to page two and there was Jeff Hook, a famous Melbourne cartoon artist and he'd hide a little hook in each one of his drawings. So my brother and I would search for the hook, then after we had our fun finding the hook, we actually both proceeded to draw, as closely as we could, a copy of the Jeff Hook cartoon. We just had simple big blue pen biros and just using those pens to actually evoke an image. So the stakes are high for the home team and the crowd well aware of that. So away we go, the final term action. So I always loved football uh, from a very young age when I was yay high, seven or eight years of age. So I played hundreds of games in junior football and then I was lucky enough to be invited by a Richmond football club. So I did a full season with the under-19s and I was actually lucky enough to get a game with the Richmond Football Club Reserves on the MCG, even kicked a goal. I did a full pre-season with the senior team, but I didn't make the final cut. That was a bit of a blow not to make the final cut for Richmond. That was something life threw at me and in the end I'm actually very grateful that I took the path that I did. I was fortunate enough to be offered a position with Kovac Architecture. The thing that I learned most from Tom was just about that essence of the idea and about the simplicity of the flowing lines and how that emerges somehow into a building. And I suppose that's where I came into it, to take Tom's crazy wild caffeine fueled sketches and turn that into architecture. Okay, so this project is my first ever residential job after university. This design really drew on its relationship with the southern boundary of the site to the park. So we thought we'll make the house the boundary, so there's no need to have a fence. Do you want to just explain that for camera, please? Yeah, sure. So, Why is she doing yeah. So this, this was a, a young woman doing, there was a period when Polaroid started coming back and this is just a couple of young women doing a Polaroid snap of themselves. This, uh, yeah, so it just kind of marked a point in time, I suppose, and it gives an animation and, a, and an alternative focus to the beautiful atrium space of the Palais. So Tony, firstly, you know... Um... Get off your phone. <laughs> so, tell, tell me about, you know, tell, tell us about the stuff that you did, trying to flick a few of them. In 2002, I won a competition uh, to design this wing. Um, now, at the time, it wasn't a wing, it was a, it was a toll plaza for a 14 lane expressway leading to the airport district. So, I'd go and I'd stand in the field uh, where this uh, toll plaza was to be located. This is before the expressway was even built, it was just a big swathe of clay and mud ripping through the rice paddy fields and I remember picking up a blade of grass out of the uh, out of the, the field and I gave it a slight twist and that became the inspiration and they'd always ask me they say Tong Libi what's your story they always want to know what's my story so they didn't really care in the finer details. I could communicate that through my, my drawing, but my sketches always had to have a story that went with them. And I think that's something that I've carried through to this day. 
The idea with the, the toll plaza wing that I ended up designing, it was partly inspired by the silver birds flying overhead. You had all your 747s and, and 777s flying into Nanjing Airport not far from us. And it was this idea about the thrill of adventure, the spirit of flight and the journey and the excitement of, uh, of air travel being manifest into a piece of architecture. Um, yeah, it was a very satisfying experience and it was that universal language of the, of the sketch, which can be very, very powerful. And I turn around and see the looks on their faces or the smiles when I got it right, and, uh, and that was priceless. Often the clients would ask if they, I could sign the napkin and they, and they kept the drawing and they, they actually cherished it. And it's probably something they, they hadn't really uh, experienced before. I spent many years on construction sites as a young bloke listening to builders cursing effing architects and you know, that's not gonna work and that's a silly detail or this is going to leak. So I was always very mindful. My buildings were well designed and they were practical to construct and the passion of being able to convey that, whether it's in a sketch gesture and all that gamut of information you need to communicate in between to get your vision made, that's what is needed to be a complete architect, in my opinion. So I'll generally do a, do a black and white line drawing and then I'll get these fellas out and I can do I can do a thin stroke, I can do a broad stroke, I can colour in, I can detail, you can you can do all sorts of things with these guys. So these are my these are my weapons. My trusted art line 0.4 and a 0.6. So they're my two pens of choice. I'll have a small scale rule if I need to do details. And then the rest of them, I'll just have a, a general assortment. I love my grey pen, so my, my grey shades become quite dominant in a lot of my work. And then really I'll just use the other more colourful pens for accent. The idea is to draw in such a way that it's, it's quick and it's efficient and it communicates the idea and it generally gives an architectural appreciation of the challenges or the questions that the builders might have. So this one's a horizon edge pool. You can see the, the water comes up to the edge of the tile. The tile's got a beautiful slant on it. So the water comes over, just kisses the edge and then rolls down the face. So these are curlite ceramic tiles. So when I was when I first drew this, it was just a beautiful block of water sitting in the pool that the apartments can look down upon. You know, the, the saying that if you do a job that you love, then you're never going to work a day in your life. So with architecture for me, it's always been about this passion for design. And I suppose my means of contributing is to be able to help build that architecture through my drawing talent. So something that started with me when I was in, you know, my first years of primary school has stayed with me my entire life and I've worked on ways to hone it, um, to improve it, to study palm trees, to study the structure of a gum tree, to understand how metal works in sunlight, to understand what a piece of timber, grain, can how that can be manifest on a page, um, understanding people and their poses, people and creating shadows, people when they move, people in a crowd, and to be able to draw that and to draw it in my own personal way. So I've developed quite a signature style, um, which is just kind of my innate means of communicating. There's energy and there's ambition and there's a sense of um, optimism, I suppose, in the, in the drawn form. And that hopefully comes through in the work. And if that can benefit by getting people excited and realising that they can contribute in their own unique way, then that's probably a good thing.